Hello everyone, it's George and welcome back to Call of Dragons. As a dedicated free-to-play player who played this game for one year, I'm excited to share some insider tips and tricks with you. Stick around and let's dive in. Today we are going to speak all about mages. Uh, it's been a while, it's been a one year since I'm playing this game and I already gathered a lot of information, a lot of personal experience and a lot of other players experience in order to make this ultimate mage guide for you guys. In this video we are going to speak about every single detail which is uh, connected to the mages. And first, as always, whenever we are speaking about Legion type, we will speak about the faction, uh, which is important to have if you are a mage player. Uh, the faction which you need to be playing uh, if you are a mage player is League of Order. Uh, it's really, really easy to understand why, simply because uh, first main skill is starting hero is uh, Walder, which is uh, a magic hero, and of course special unit, which is... Um, more the reason why you should be playing for the League of Order is Celestials, which means you are going to have a couple of Mage Legions and in general uh, special units are flying units and uh, Celestials have been one of the most popular and number one flying unit in this game in my opinion. For every single faction, um, every single Legion has a different skill so which you should understand and know whenever you are playing as a a particular legion right for the mages west house uh, for league of order you are getting hp whenever there is a near, uh, nearby friendly legion that's why it actually matters to have a league of order because you will have celestials you will have west house uh, you will have couple of legions so with the west house and you are giving you the hp bonus health bonus to all of your nearby legions which are currently fighting with it's easy to understand why League of Order is a main uh, faction for even free-to-play players and for uh, mage players in general. Uh, the most important to understand uh, is the hero pairs in this game because for mages, after the introduction of two new um, heroes, legendary heroes Bertrand and Tohar, we have a variety of uh, different hero pairs for mages which I will try my best to discuss every single one of them which we currently have. Uh, at first, let's say we are, you, you are a beginner, you are just starting the game and you chose to play with the League of Orders, you would have a uh, Walder and Awakening Walder is the easiest thing to do and uh, in general Awakened Walder is really really powerful. If Walder had a better damage factor on its main skill, I think Walder would be a legendary hero. The Awakening skill is simply dealing damage to three nearby legions and in general in mass PvPs, mass wars, it's important to have skills which going to deal damage to couple of legions. Uh, so, like, Walder is a main uh, first hero for the mages which you are 100% going to get and the like most common uh, hero pair for uh, the first mage uh, legion is Walder and Welin. Uh, uh, Welin is a legendary hero which you can get from the gold keys and it's pretty easy for a free to play player to have at least 5 levels on a main skill which I always recommend. I do still see a couple of players who do does not have uh, first skill maxed out and I would recommend again that don't try to unlock other skills like second or third or fourth skill. At first try to make your first skill to five level and then try to upgrade your hero. So like Walder and Welin is pretty basic uh, mage hero pair which like uh, every single player should be playing uh, even if you are not playing at the, as a mage uh, primary uh, main. Uh, still you would have Walder, you 100% have Welin if you are already playing the game for at least a couple of seasons. Uh, so like pretty basic uh, hero pair which is uh, like totally fine. I'm still using Walder and Welin for example but I'm not the... A mage main i'm more of a marksman main the another hero pair which is which have been one of the most popular one uh, since the day one is about lilia and welin uh, lilia is a pay to win uh, legendary hero you need to pay at least one dollar to unlock her after that you can choose her as for a vip shop uh, as I am a free-to-play player, not spending even a $1, unfortunately I don't have Lilia, but 
Uh, main point about Lilia in general is her awakening skill, like he is applying torch to couple of legions. Again, kinda same style of gameplay as a Walder, but way less damage all around. Uh, that's why I said if Walder had a simply more damage factor skills uh, on, on its play kit, uh, he would be legendary too. Uh, so, Lilia is still one of the most popular uh, mage heroes, especially popular with pay to win players because whenever you are going to uh, awaken uh, Lilia, she is dealing a huge amount of damage, especially if there is a couple of uh, people, a couple of legions around the same area. You are applying Scorch, and Scorch is like a ticking damage. And for a tier 5 uh, units and the tier 5 players, this Scorch is just demolishing, especially for to play players. For the Lilia hero pairs, there is a couple of options. Uh, for example, Lilia and Welin has been the oldest one. Um, like since day one, almost every single mage player was and is running Lilia and Welin. But after the like game is progressing and uh, like players are trying to figure out new type of hero pairs which will be working, um, like in the future or maybe even now, Lilia got a new couple of hero pairs which she's like pretty happy about it like for example first one uh lilia and indis right you might be asking why in this in this like for a beginners in this for is, is for the gathering she's like overall uh type of legendary hero but one thing we know about indis is that we like it's easy to upgrade skills of the indies because we are getting shards from the dragon trail well, trick is pretty simple. Um, by itself, Lilia is dealing huge amount of damage, and uh, Indis is all about staying alive. And also, one buff which Indis will give your uh, Legion. It's important, especially damage dealer uh, heroes, right? For example, what what's the uh, buff I'm trying to speak right now? At like, uh, for example, here, um, like, I'm. Target damage taken bonus, 20%. Guys, like, or ladies. 20% uh, is a lot, especially if you are having Lilia as an um, uh, awakened hero. Uh, of course, Lilia will be primary legendary hero in this hero pair, and in this will be secondary. You are giving 20% more damage to Lilia's skill. That's a huge amount of damage. Like, 20% is a lot, trust me. Uh, I understand you are not going to use the gathering skill, but who cares about gathering skill? You are getting 20% more damage, you are getting healing, uh, and also one of the most unique skills in the game, uh, Legion Capacity Bonus, uh, 7500 and HP Bonus 20%. Well, like you are getting 20% uh, more damage, you are getting heals, uh, you are getting HP bonus and legend capacity. You are tanky, you are having Lilia as a primary, and you are just demolishing the enemies, right? Uh, and of course, counter attack damage reduction, always nice to have, 15% is a lot, and also you are removing one uh, debuff effect from your uh, legion quite good for the supportive type of gameplay especially you need to understand that it's at this stage and season ti almost everyone uh should have like at least five 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 on the three skills of the uh indies which i think like first skill and the third skill is the most important skills uh for the indies now uh, another hero pair for the lilia that's why why she's still being so popular like new hero pair is the uh, uh, Thea uh, and the people are running uh, Lilia and Thea with the Vestals or even Celestials, doesn't really matter. Uh, the gameplay is pretty simple, kinda similar to Indies. Uh, Thea is giving a lot of survivability, a uh, lot of hero skill damage, which is great for the major uh, legendary heroes, and also tons of buff, right? Uh, this That's why Thea is used by many different hero pairs because simply she is giving a lot of buffs, a lot of important um, bonuses such as defense bonus attack bonus march speed bonus uh, again attack bonus uh, hero skill damage taken reduction that's for the tankiness and in general that's why thea have been so popular even right now the uh, lilia and the thea hero pairs is quite new same as lilia is in this uh, and it simply depends on your gameplay depends on which kind of skills you have more upgraded on the legendary heroes or in general heroes that's why in this topic i'm just simply uh, telling you guys which kind of legendary which kind of mage hero pairs you can have 
and after you're gonna watch this video you will check your uh, heroes and you will just try to make the best possible option uh, because like skills actually really really matter on the heroes uh, well for now the Lilia topic is done of course like Lilia can be run in a, almost every single mage legion uh, but the best options uh, have been Lilia Welling, Lilia Indis, uh, Lilia uh, Thea uh, play around those hero pairs if you want to, to like generally play with Lilia as a primary hero uh, now it's time for us to speak about the newest legendary heroes which is Bertrand and uh, Tohar uh, actually, Bertrand has a way more use uh, in, in current meta. Uh, the best part about uh, Bertrand is that he has a lot of damage and also a lot of survivability for, on, and like uh, in general from the uh, Welling. Why Welling was popular? Because of defense uh, penetration and the defense uh, uh, like break for the mage units. That's the same skill Bertrand has. Uh, for example, here, magic unit defense penetration 10%. And of course, only attack, uh, magic unit attack, magic unit attack bonus 25%, right? That's a great amount. And again, attack and defense bonuses. Uh, Bertrand is uh, quite a survivable uh, hero, which is having a lot more use day by day. Uh, it's pretty hard for a pay to imp for a free to play players to awaken um, Bertrand uh, because it's a newest hero and you need to have spending some money in order to have that much legendary tokens. Maybe you have saved up and maybe you have uh, like enough tokens to awaken him. Especially, it will be a lot more better. For the hero pairs, well, it's pretty simple. Bertrand and Tohar can be great, um, like newest heroes. Uh, at, at, at first, always is uh, like hero pairs. Uh, but I think Bertrand and Tohar is not the best possible option for the Bertrand in general. I think Bertrand can be played with Thea. Thea is giving you a lot more survivability and it will give you more time to uh, do these stacking things because that's the like uh, golden marks are the like most important synergy for the Bertrand which you need to, to have some time in order to give the full potential of the uh, hero right so Bertrand can be played with the Tohar uh, Bertrand can be played with uh, Thea Bertrand can be played with um, um, Welling, for example, because you're gonna have a um, magic defense reduction double, like 20% from Welling, and you are going to have 20% uh, if I'm not mistaken, 10% uh, from the uh, Bertrand. It's like a kind of stacking with each other, and you are going to uh, break their defenses through the magic pretty easily. So, Bertrand, like as always, a newest hero, a lot of use, one of the most powerful uh, heroes, and I think most popular one with the Lilia. These two heroes are the most popular, in my opinion, currently uh, in the game. Uh, the we are not forgetting about the epic hero which is Alwyn. Well, Alwyn has only one use um, in my opinion. Um, Alwyn is great whenever there is a lot of players around the battlefield, like Alliance versus Alliance, uh, like hundred legions against hundred legion uh, battles, because you are going to give this poison ticking damage, uh, especially if you have awakened. Uh, Alwyn and simply for epic heroes I have awakened every single one of them and that should be pretty easy for you guys too. For the Alwyn I'm currently playing Alwyn with Indis uh, because I don't have uh, Lilia, I don't have Bertrand, I don't have Dohar. Uh, that's the only mage heroes I do still have left uh, currently uh, and I guess like I'm trying my best to make Alwyn and Indis as tanky as possible so uh, Alwyn will uh, do its thing like debuffs, uh, poison damage, taking damage. Uh, in, in this will give me more HP and more legion capacity and also 20% more damage. Uh, that's even better for epic heroes because generally epic heroes doesn't have much damage by itself. Uh, the last uh, hero and hero pairs which we should speak about is about Atheist. Um, still, uh, I'm not forgetting that Atheist is epic hero, but. Uh, you can uh, like understand by its look that Atheist is about Celestials and yet again the, there is a lot of use uh, simply because Celestials are the most popular special units in the game. Um, Atheist can be run uh, with Celestials, uh, special units of League of Order with Thea. 
um, uh, Celestials can be run, uh, like uh, Atheos can be run with Bertrand, but Bertrand would be primary 100% and uh, Atheos would be secondary. That's the option if you are running Bertrand and Atheos with Celestials, right? But in general, like uh, before Bertrand was introduced to our gameplay, um, like Atheist main hero pair has always been with Thea, right? But Thea has been the primary one and Atheist have been the secondary one. Uh, that's uh, like I, I tried my best to discuss almost every single major hero pair which we are currently having in the game. Uh, if you guys will have the, like another options please share because this game is pretty uh, like uh, dynamic there is different kind of uh, uh, tricks and the tips which every single player is finding out by itself uh, the next topic we are going to speak is about um, artifacts we have a huge amount of artifacts for major players and major legions uh, such as a hero pairs because as you understand we have a lot of hero pairs currently in the game for mages right let's try to understand which uh, artifacts are great with the exact hero pairs which we are currently having in the game uh, at first uh, let's start with the basic ones uh, like there is a couple of artifacts which you can run in many different uh, hero pairs uh, like that's how i call them not exclusive there is some artifacts which are exclusive to some heroes and uh, we're gonna speak about that of course let's at first feel like um, speak about exclusive ones because they are way less for example bertrand right right the newest legendary hero which we are having for mages uh, mirage orb is especially great with bertrand it's exclusive artifact for the bertrand and every kind of synergy you are having with bertrand you are going to have with mirage orb so mirage orb is exclusive for him and if you have it uh, try to get bertrand and apply the mirage orb to him uh, this artifact is actually dealing a huge amount of damage, especially if you are a uh, pay to win player. Uh, the another exclusive artifact which we currently have in the game is Infernal Flame, and I think Infernal Flame is, is exclusive for the Lilia. If you are going to read the additional effects, uh, you will understand that uh, this is for Lilia. It's about Scorch, um, it's about Keen. Um, Lilia is great with Scorch, it's in her play kit. Uh, that's why Infernal Flame is actually the best uh, choice for the Lilia. Of course, you can always run even Mirage Orb or Infernal Flame with different heroes, but if you want to have a best value out of those artifacts, you need to uh, attach Mirage Orb to the um, Bertrand and Infernal Flame to the uh, Lilia. Let's uh, try to uh, think about the other artifacts which might be exclusive for the mages but actually there is none like I think Infernal Flame and the Mirage Orb is the exclusive ones for the mage uh, legions currently in the game. Uh, for the other artifacts for example uh, Phoenix Eye is not exclusive to any legendary or epic hero you can use uh, Phoenix Eye with any kind of hero pair for the mages. Uh, like pure assault pvp artifact which is going to deal damage to four nearby legions and uh, if you will be able to upgrade the skills you're gonna deal uh, 4000 damage to the five max targets are five targets right so 20,000 damage will be applied to the uh, enemy if you will use uh, the burst strike in a perfect way uh, phoenix eye is not exclusive artifact it's like a uh, like most common one you can use it on any kind of uh, mage hero pair which is a uh, purely damage dealer right now the another artifact which is tier of arbor is a more supportive type of artifact which has a lot of use uh, uh, for farming uh, for uh, pvp for pve like any kind of situation during this gameplay of call of dragons you will have a lot of use of tier of arbor the magic unit defense legion defense uh, like defensive artifact but main purpose of the tier of arbor is healing uh, which you are getting like uh, if you will upgrade to the five level you will have 800 healing for eight seconds uh, and also you are healing for uh, friendly legions like whenever you are having war and you see this uh, circle around and it's healing you know it's um, tier of arbor and you're always rushing to this circle to get some heals for your legions right uh, that's why Tier of Arbon still has a lot of use uh, in the game. Uh, we can check uh, other artifacts, like if you don't have any legendary artifact for your mages and you are just a beginner of this game. Uh, Magic Bomb is a lesser version of Phoenix Eye, um, honestly. 
you are building less damage uh, to the target um, you are applying the ticking bomb but to an enemy legion and whenever there is a red circle around this legion and whenever somebody is close everybody is getting damaged by the uh, time bomb of course for epic artifact skill damage factor is way less than legendary artifact that's only 1800 um, like and you will be able to deal damage to three nearby legions it's easy to understand uh, time bomb is a lesser version of uh, Phoenix Eye. Other than that, uh, there is not much uh, mage legendary or mage epic artifacts in the game. We can uh, like honestly check the uh, like universal artifact compendium. Whenever I'm making videos, I always speak about the artifacts which we can get uh, by simply playing the game. Uh, I think that's the main ones. Like from here, like Phoenix Eye, FTR of Arborn, and also Time Bomb. Uh, Magic Bomb is the obvious ones and uh, for exclusives, Myrage Orb and uh, Infernal Flame is great uh, for the uh, mage exclusive Lily Eyed Bertrand hero pairs. Uh, for now, like uh, it's time for us to speak about Warpits for mages, and uh, there is a different variety of the Warpits which we will, will be great uh, for the mage legions. Uh, currently, the worst mage um, uh, Warpit which we are currently having in the game. Um, is the uh, ice uh, lizard that's uh, less damage you are getting from the uh, beasts uh, if you are speaking only about magic ones right sapphire frederick is the most popular one like you can honestly uh, play with sapphire frederick with almost every single uh, magic uh, unit uh, uh, hero pairs uh, doesn't really matter if you are land on flying uh, hero pair the sapphire drake is a flying warpit and it will be attached attachable by with any major hero pair currently in the game the exclusive one in my opinion is shadow fair drake shadow fair drake is especially good with the uh, bertrand hero pairs because of these tags you are getting from this shadow fair drake is especially good for the play kit of the bertrand so we still have one exclusive one in terms of magic units which is like this one if you have shadow fair drake try, try to attach to the bertrand legion uh, the shadow one is also of course flying uh, warpit and you will be really really happy if you will be playing with the Shadow Fair Drake as in Branch Bertrand in general. For the Sapphire Fair Drake, like Walder, Welin, Lilia, like um, Alwyn, any kind, even Bertrand, uh, for example, any kind of mage. Uh, Allegiance, Sapphire, Fair Drake will be totally fine. Regarding Ice Lizard, I would not recommend to play mages with the Ice Lizard, like lowest damage you are getting from the Ice Lizard in terms if we're gonna compare it to the uh, Sapphire, Fair Drake and Shadow, Fair Drake. Uh, currently, there is not much uh, interesting stuff about uh, Ice Lizard, that's why I would not be recommending you guys to try to play with the uh, Ice Lizard in general. There is like obvious choices, uh, Sapphire Fair Drake, Shadow Fair Drake, uh, with the uh, Lizards, uh, Sandra Lizards is weak, uh, not a lot of damage, Ice Lizard is weak, and of course like if you want to be more tanky, like you will be able to play with Sand Lizard uh, because of the uh, healing and the survivability you are getting from this Warped. But main and first choices is always about Sapphire Fair Drake and Shadow Fair Drake and also the main skill of the both uh, Warpets will be uh, follow up. I think follow up is the best uh, skill you can attach to your Warpet because it generally gives you a lot of stats, a lot of uh, chances, damage, healing, shield. There is a chance you will trigger your uh, rage skill twice. So great, great follow up synergy. I would highly recommend to attach uh, to your mage. Uh, warpits of this uh, warped skill we already spoke about faction differences we already spoke about hero pairs of the mage legions uh, we already spoke about the artifacts and we already spoke about the warpits right in general lot and like at the end i will speak that about the seasonal talents which a newest thing for the uh, season TI and uh, as we are already know uh, from the uh, future patch notes uh, these talents are going to stay they might change the skills but the whole concept is going to stay for the major um, seasonal talents I would recommend to 
Now go with the forceful leadership, your legion deals 1.5% more hero skill damage and hero skill damage is the main type of damage for the major legions in general. Um, like for, for here there is a quite a good choice, Herces 1 is a great uh, talent which generally doesn't really matter if you are mage or marksman or anything, it applies for the range units. And uh, Burning Rage, your Legion deals 3% more attack uh, damage, normal attack damage uh, in the field. Well, for the mages, um, I don't think the normal attack damage is the main factor of their damage, right? Uh, that's why try to think about how many Legions you are going to have uh, for the fights. If it's less than 2, then you should be going Burning Rage. If you have 4 or 5 ranged units for the battlefield, you are simply getting a lot of uh, attack um, for every single ranged units during the battlefield. Uh, for mages, uh, Long Range Warfare and Arcana Torrent, uh, easy to understand which one will be better. Uh, Arcana Torrent will be for the mages, while in the battle in the field, your mage units gain 5 uh, more rage. Uh, points per second and deal 10% more hero skill damage. Uh, amazing talent, uh, amazing especially for mages and you should be taking Arcana Torrent uh, if you are playing as a mage. And yeah, suppressive fire, that's, there is no option to choose here, uh, always great to have, uh, like legendary like in general march speed reduction for mages and rage accumulation speed minus great thing like you have a highest range in the game uh, as a mage and if you are reducing the march speed of the enemy it's hard for them to run away from you uh, and you are dealing a lot of damage by the skill uh, that's the battle um, accuracy uh, like guide from me for the mages first will be forceful leadership uh, depending on your gameplay and the amount of legions you have hertz as one or burning rage uh, arcana and torrent and suppressive fire uh, that will be the main priority for the mage legions, in my opinion, for the season talents. Uh, that's all I wanted to speak about, uh, ultimate guide about mages in this game, in this amazing game. I hope I covered um, every single detail which is important to understand to play as a mage, which have been the most popular legion type in the game since the day one, and doesn't really matter after the introduction of long range warfare there is still a lot more mage players than marksmen right that's the that's why the idea behind the making this uh, ultimate guide about mages the, uh, from my own experiences uh, i have been playing this game almost uh, like one year like i'm really really close and Whenever I'm trying to make a video about a particular topic, I always try to gather my own experience, experience of the pay to win players, or in general experience of the players of Call of Dragons. Uh, if you have a different ideas, if you have a different thoughts, please share. It's always welcome uh, in this channel. And as always, if you like the content, uh, if you like the videos I'm trying to make, press like, subscribe, share. It always gives me more and more motivation to continue making videos for this amazing game. Um, that's all for today. Thanks for watching. I hope you are having an amazing day, night, uh, morning, wherever you are, uh, depending wherever you are. Uh, I'm going to see you very, very soon. Bye-bye and good luck.